Well, there was some good stuff, like a New Japan Strong influence and the women being featured more. I'm John Rantham with my review of AEW Dark Elevation. There will be a few criticisms I have, but at least this particular episode was 40 minutes short in last week's edition, so that's a bonus. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So let's jump right on into it with QT Marshall with the factory. This faction isn't working. The factionery, that wordplay didn't work at all. He took on Robo. I think Robo has a good look, and I was impressed with his debut, and hopefully he's featured a little bit more going forward. QT's a good worker, but this heel run, I was hoping it would work. It isn't working at all. Hits QT cutter in three and a half to four minutes, gets a victory, fine, whatever. Let's move on. Abaddon versus Layla Gray. I love Abaddon's look, been impressed since her debut. She's improved quite a bit as far as her look, her work, her presence, and she's really dedicated to this gimmick. Layla Gray... I want to see more of her. I want to see more of what she can do. And Abaddon ate her alive and hit the Cemetery Drive 1, 2, 3. Hopefully, once this Rampage show debuts in August, they can feature the women a little bit more. They don't have the talent depth to, like, you know, feature a ton of women segments every single week because there are a lot of women they're trying to bring up. But they have enough to feature them a little bit more on Dynamite, except, like, you know, the occasional big match. Like, Thunder Rosa and Britt Baker was a great goddamn match. And they've had good matches on occasion. Red Velvet's a really good worker, and their uh, Kylan King has improved quite a bit. I just think there's a bit more that they could do, and have it on somebody else that they could use really well. And Layla Gray, she can improve in the coming months and, you know, a couple years. So anyway, uh, speaking of the women, Thunder Rosa versus Ashley DM Boise or Brose or Boise or whatever, Boise, uh, Ashley D, which sounds like, you know, Emma Stone's character. That was easy A. Moving on. Love me some Thunder Rosa. Got to meet her at an indie show. Fantastic. Great influence for young women. And honestly, she sh proves that you don't, you, you can just, you know, keep working hard, keep working hard, keep working hard and improve, improve. And if you're dedicated enough, you're going to go far. She has gotten so goddamn good since the Cobra Moon run and Lucha Underground. And she was good there. Saw the talent, but she has improved so much. Working in the NWA, working all over the goddamn world, all over the world. And her time in AEW has been really beneficial to her and also to showcase that the women can be featured and, you know, on equal footing with the men. And given Ashley's inexperience, I think she did fine here. Working with women like Thunder Rosa will definitely help. I did like the Billy Goat's uh, buckle curse, you know, slamming her head right in there. Um, and then she got the choke for the win. It's Peruvian something or other. I actually can't remember the name of it. I apologize. I don't want to screw it up. It sounds like a word salad. But I love Thunder Rosa, and I'm glad that, you know, she's getting featured here. Hopefully, she can work in the NWA and AEW, and they don't go with the stipulation of Thunder Rosa having to work just the NWA, because at this point, I think she's going to move on to greener pastures, even though she's done really good shit for the NWA. Because she runs Mission Pro, or helps run Mission Pro Wrestling and stuff like that. She's doing really good stuff for women's wrestling. Moving on. Um, I did like how uh, we got a video package on the guns. Really good stuff here. Billy didn't think he'd be wrestling this long. Uh, but he gets wrestled with his kids. He basically said, I want, you know, your, I, I want you kids to get into college and graduate college. The kids talk about growing up uh, with a wrestler as a father. He was a great parent and a great influence. And uh, once they graduated college, of course, Austin wanted to wrestle, wanted to follow in dad's footsteps. He has a lacrosse and football background. And then Colton was building, building million-dollar homes for Laker players. I wonder if one of the Laker players was unstoppable, if you'll see what I did there. And, you know, he Billy's proud of what his kids have done. And apparently Austin also does music, I think. Um, they didn't really play any of it, so I don't have a goddamn clue what he does. But... This is good stuff. More video packages like this. Less matches that go twice as long as they need to, even on Dark Elevation. Even to get ring time, I get it. But you don't need to have some matches go twice as long. Do video packages. Give us a reason to care about these particular towns. Why should we care about Abaddon? Why should we care about Layla Gray? Why should, you know, Thunder Rosa, <laughs> more established. But give us a reason to care about some of these characters. Robo, give us a reason to care about these talents that you're featuring. And, okay, cool. I want to see more of them. Um, anyway... Lee Johnson versus Daniel Garcia. Well, at least Daniel got to face an actual wrestler this time around. Um, Lee Johnson, this is fine. I didn't really care. This is a point where my interest in the show kind of dipped. Lee, though Lee Johnson and Daniel Garcia kept my interest enough that the work was good, but it's just it was obvious that things were going to start to come down into the lull of the show. And uh, he hit the brain dog. I don't know why they call it that. He gets victory one, two, three. Sky and the other page are cutting a promo. Because he, he he's the Mr. Ego Man, Lego my ego. Um, he They cut a promo about Darby and Sting and stuff like that. And I don't know why they're a team. I don't care. And I like Scorpio. Ethan's a good athlete. 
they don't work too well together as a team for me. Nyla Rose versus Robin Renegade. Get rid of Vicky. Just get rid of her. It was a mauling beast bomb. One, two, three. Nyla does not need Vicky. And then um, E Page ver uh, versus Al uh, Alex Reynolds of the Dark Order. Nothing against the Dark Order. They're good athletes. I don't really care about the gimmick. I tuned out. Ego's Edge. One, two, three. Ty Conte versus Queen Anamata. If it sounds like there are some of these matches I'm just kind of met on, it's because I am eventually when they get to be just matches of nothing really matters, why, you know, are why get too upset about them. Ty Conte does have something special. Um, Anamata actually has some good kicks and has a pretty good look and used her size to throw around Ty a little bit, but she got kicked a lot, kicked in the corner, kicked in the spotlight. DD Ty for the victory, and boy, Ty covered her in an interesting way. Moving on. Penta uh, with Alex, always screw up the last name, versus Mike Mike Seidel with Matt. And man, this Alex guy is great. I want to punch him, but he's goddamn awesome. <clears throat> Penta's a great heel. Mike is fine in the ring. Um, this went a bit long. I think Penta could have beat him a little bit quicker. Nothing against Mike. He's a good athlete. Uh, Sit-out powerbomb that they called. They called a Mishinoku driver sit-out powerbomb. Whatever. Uh, chop trade, and then we get a the Penta package, the Fear Factor one, two, three, and then we get Scorpio Sky versus Allen Five Angels. I like Sky, but no, pretty much the same thing, copy and paste from uh, E Page versus Reynolds. Uh, heel lock for the win after a number of you know after a number of jokes about dragon screws and action that just kind of blended together. Matt Hardy promo. He's making money and he wants to, he loves his group, but his original goal was to basically establish his name and make his name live forever and do some stuff and Matt should not be in the ring anymore. He took on Fuego Del Sol and oh look, Matt shouldn't be in the ring anymore and he got the leech and got the victory. Sorry, just Matt can't go anymore. And then we get um, Ren Narita versus Royce Isaacs. Um, and Royce is actually pretty good. Actually, now that I think about it, I think it was 12 matches, but still. Um, <clears throat> some, of the ma some of the matches felt like they were two and one. Ren Narita versus Royce Isaacs. Royce Isaacs saw him at a few indie shows. Great guy. He did well in the NWA. He's done good stuff here. He did good stuff on, you know, he's done good stuff in New Japan Strong. Ren Narita, for being only a few years into his career and being on excursion, working in New Japan Strong, he's done some good shit. And the bridges he does and the shit he does. Royce did some great stuff here. He had a nice jackhammer for two. Did a good strike battle. Good back and forth, back and forth. Really good power stuff. But that high gable grip, just that bridge. One, two, three. Ren Narita getting the victory. Good stuff. Well worked. And then we get Rocky Romero versus J.D. Drake and Co. I want to take this opportunity to say I am not going to come up with a goofy nickname to mock Cesar Bernoni anymore. For this reason. I have learned that his wife is battling leukemia. However I feel about him in the ring, I hope that his wife beats this. I feel bad for the fact he has to see his wife suffer this and he has to be away from his wife, whatever. I hope that his wife beats this. Cancer's a goddamn bitch, and I hope she can beat it. This match, and I love Rocky. J.D. Drake has impressed me. I think he needs new gear. I don't think wrestling in jeans is really good for him. It's just my opinion as a viewer. This match needs to be half the length that it was. I understand what they were trying to do. J.D. Drake does have something and can be somebody they could feature. But Rocky's really good, but this did nothing for any either of them. Rocky does eventually get, um, you know, the numbers, you know, attacked by people outside. And then Rocky does, you know, get, he does come back, but then he gets hit with the X-Plex and then gets hit with the running uh, kick for two. And then uh, Mist Moon Salt, and then he gets a uh, you know Mahi Straw Cradle one two three, and then we get a beat down, and the best alien friends show up with Trent, and you know Rocky and Trent back in New Japan, and I believe in 2015 were Repugni Vice, and suddenly the Repugni Vice theme plays, almost like they had this planned out, but wrestling never plans stuff out. I like Rocky, and I'm glad that Rocky got featured. I'm glad JD Drake was in the main event. I just think this went a bit too long. But anyway, those are my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Ripplin. I'll see you soon.